Photoshop Beginners. Those who want to learn Photoshop, this tutorial is for you. Because you will want to edit your photos you have taken or you will want to create something new. For that, you need to know Photoshop. The best way to get started with Photoshop is to get to know its interface like any other program. You cannot start anything without knowing things like the layer window, the toolbox, what the top, bottom, right, left icons do. You need to learn these first. In this tutorial, it will be for people who have not used Photoshop before, who don't know the interface. I will try to show you quickly what is what and how to use it. So let's get started. Photoshop is a visual editing program where you can edit photos or create illustrative drawings from scratch. If we get very close, we can see that it's a pixel-based program and depending on your creativity, there is almost nothing you can't do with design and photos. To open a new workspace, in Photoshop, we use the new option under file above. New means new and is used to create a new workspace. When we press the new option, we will see various parameters. On the left side, there are ready-made templates that have been used before or that come with Photoshop's installation. But we mostly use the right side. For example, if you have width and height values, you write the width here, the height here, and the resolution here, and create a new document. If I click on the create button here, it will create a workspace with a width of 1000 and a height of 1000 at 72 dpi. When I clicked, as you can see, a 1000 by 1000 workspace with 72 dpi was created. Now I can do whatever I want on it. With file open, you can import a photo from your computer. For example, I have an image like this here and I'm going to import it here. As you can see, I can start working on it. Photoshop layers, one of the most important features of Photoshop is that working with layers will make your work much more practical. You can understand this much better by practicing, by going through our previous tutorials. But if I need to enter quickly now, these operations are handled through the layer panel on the right side. If the layer panel is not visible in your workspace, you need to check the layers option under window. If you click on the new layer icon at the bottom right of the layer window, you will create a new layer and I will show you why we should use a layer on this layer. Now, I draw a line with a brush. I cannot change the color of this line later. I cannot change its location. I undo it. I create a new layer by clicking this button and I draw the same line again. Now, if I make the eye of the layer bottom invisible, as you can see, it appears here as a separate layer. I can move it later. I can even change its color. I can change its shape. I can do whatever I want. This is the main purpose of layers. It provides you convenience in your project. Therefore, you should prepare all your projects and works with a layered working system. To add text to Photoshop, I press the letter T. In the toolbox on the left side, you will see type icon. I click here and I'm typing a text. There is the text. The text is very small and there will be some features on the text that I want to manipulate. So I open the character panel at the bottom of the window. With the character panel, if you have used Microsoft Word or any text editor in Word as standard, we can see their properties here as well. This is the font size. I increase the font size. I make it black and I can change other properties here. If I want to add a paragraph, I select the text tool again. I create a text area on the work. Everything I write will be in the text area. It will not go outside this text area, the text area that I have created. If I go to the paragraph tab, I can center this text area. I can right align it and perform other operations under this panel. To cut a photo, we use this icon. When you hover over it here, it is already designated as crop tool and its shortcut is C. When I click on this sign, little shapes appear on the edges that I can click and drag like this. And by dragging these shapes, I can cut the selected area as I want. That means I can cancel the outer layers. I have set the window to be square around it like this. And I can do that by pressing this key or by pressing enter on the keyboard. As you can see, the photo is now cut out and I can continue my project as a square. One of the important features to know in Photoshop is the selection tools. Shapes with dashed lines mean that I can make a selection. And even when I click on it, it allows me to select square or rectangle, circle and straight line, single pixel straight line. Now, let's make a selection as a square. As you can see, I have made a square selection, which we can then cut and copy and paste somewhere else and use. In the same way, I can take the oval and make a selection on the oval. And then I can drag the selection like this. 
I copy the shape, I will select it with Ctrl C and paste it with Ctrl V. If you look in the layer panel, it has become a separate layer. It is copied as a separate layer. By dragging it like this, I can see that a copy has been created. I can use brush techniques in Photoshop in two ways. One is by selecting the brush option here. With this brush, as you can see in the example, I can draw lines in the area I want. Everything starts with these lines. The other option is the clone stamp tool. That is brushing an existing area by copying it to another place at the same time. I can explain this as follows. For example, there are cracks here and I want the same cracks here. I want to copy these cracks. After selecting the clone stamp tool, I set a reference for myself by pressing the alt key. So my reference point will start from this area. I click here. As you can see, the area I painted on the left side and the area I referenced on the right side can be seen. I can enlarge the brush size in the right click options. So I can paint larger areas. The clone stamp tool is used to paint by copying an area in a photo. The effects in Photoshop are also affected that you can evaluate and use according to your project. If you want to add blur to this image, we use filters and effects. For example, for blur, I click filter, blur, and there are various blur options under it. This is the option I'm going to use for blur, Gaussian blur. I click on that and you will usually see a window like this under effects. In this window, there are parameters that change depending on the properties of the effect. And here we have a parameter where we can only adjust the radius value and the radius value only expresses the rate at which the blurring occurs. As you can see, as you increase it, the blurring rate increases. And under these effects, under these windows, there is an option called preview. If you uncheck this, the effect you give will not appear as a preview. But if the preview option is checked, the effect you give will appear instantly. By clicking OK, I ensure that this effect is applied. By clicking cancel, I ensure that this effect is cancelled, not applied. We can also view the history of our work in Photoshop. A certain number of times, of course, according to the power of our computer, I go to the history option under window. This is the panel where I can see all the movements I made on the photo. What we did last time, we copied the cracks. There was a crack brushing action again. Before that, I deleted a layer. I deleted this layer. I moved this layer. This way, you can go back and see what you have done. You can use this panel to undo the mistakes you made in possible situations. And finally, how to save a file in Photoshop. Let me show you that too. Photoshop has its own format, the PST format. I click the file, I click save as. Here you can choose the extensions, file formats you want to save. Photoshop has its own format PST. If you save your work as PST, so if you save it as a Photoshop file, you save it in a way that you can edit the work we have done. But if you save it as a JPEG, we have JPEG here, or you can save it as PNG. If you lose it in these image formats, all the work you have done will be saved as a single layer. And it will be saved in a way that you cannot edit it later. So we need to use PSD to save the original file. If you are done and you are going to use this image on a website, send it to a friend, you can save it as a JPEG or PNG. You can find many more of these tutorials on the channel under Photoshop tutorials. If you are just starting out in the Photoshop world, I think you can learn a lot by repeating each one by one. I hope this tutorial will be useful for beginners. If you have any questions, you can easily ask them in the comments section. That's all for this video. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.